Alright, so um, so I will do 23 over again because it's part of 24 and 25. So somebody start reading for me at verse 23. We'll go through um, 27. Really change, transform our mind into really becoming low 
and becoming humble before the mighty hand of God and seeing a need. You know, I think that's one of the biggest issues to getting saved is do I need to be saved? And that 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 takes a whole lot of humility to say that there's something wrong with me and I need somebody else to help fix me. That takes a whole lot of humility. But that's the crux of salvation. Because you're admitting that there's something wrong with me and I need Jesus to help fix me. And so I think that's the piece Jesus is really saying. There has to be a major transformation in all the forms that we have in our lives. Yep. Yes, and, 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 I, and I look back at, at Jesus' life and his journey when he go, he, he like you say, he never portrayed to be a rich man or this man. He had he had all the brothers from his father. And, and, and Jesus, remember when Jesus came to town, Jesus was riding a donkey. And you know, if he had all this sin, Jesus could have had the biggest parts there, you know what they call them, five devs, and he could have came in on 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 uh, Billy Blue, the one that won the, the cup of it. I like that sometimes, that race. And um, he could have came in on any kind of horse he wanted. He never did that. Like what I was saying, he always gave the question like he was a poor man. No matter how can that be the king of Jews? Look at him. He dirty, this and that. He was just trying to tell us that this is it. I'm, I'm coming in to, to get folks saved. I'm not coming to boast about anything. My father in heaven got all the glory. So he never betrayed to be a rich man. He always came in just like a regular guy. You know what I'm saying? Jesus ain't had to ride on a donkey. You know, so that's the way I look at that piece there. And I think you, you keep stuff in the background. You know, you keep him, you know, I even just think about just with life. You know, some of the richest people in the world, you can't even tell they're rich by looking at them. You know, if you just look at them on the street, you know, um, you can't even tell that they're rich because I think they've understood, that they understand the secret to maintaining wealth is you, you, you don't have to be, you know, you don't have to be flashy. You know, you don't have to prove to everybody that you got it. If you got it, you got it. Why do you need to prove to everybody that you have it? And, and, and I see that with some of the your wealthiest people in the world. You know, I mean, you look at somebody like Bill Gates and if he wanted to, he could, he could buy a suit that costs two hundred thousand dollars, but when you look at this kind of suits that he, that he wears, I mean, they're just like regular three, four hundred dollars suits, like everybody else, you know. Um, the, the, I mean, you, you see, you see examples all the time of people that have it. Now, but you have, you see people that don't have real wealth that have like temporary money. They might have ten, three, ten. They, they, they might be making a lot of money right now, but it's not the kind of money that. That their grandchildren necessarily going to be able to enjoy, especially at the rate they live. And and you see a lot of them got a flash. You know, um, a lot of a lot of our young men, soon they make the pro, you know, they want to go and buy my own new house and buy seven cars for themselves. Well, you know, if you just kind of just you can help mama out a whole lot more if you go and really put yourself in a position because that's only gonna last three years. You know, uh, and you know, you might be blessed, and it might last ten or eleven, but but it's only gonna last three. And if, and if you got five years of making ten million dollars a year, that's fifty million dollars. But if you're in the habit of, of spending, you know, eight million dollars a year, or nine million dollars, or waiting, you know, you when you waiting for the season to start back up so money can come in, because money runs short, you're not putting yourself in a position, you know, to where mama can be blessed. Be better off for yourself. Put yourself in a position to where you can accumulate wealth and and have your wealth continue to make money, so that your children's children, you know, can can be provided for. And um, but but you see that that concept where it throws money to the fund, and you gotta feel like you just everybody got everybody gotta know you got a little bit of money. And um, and so I think it's um, extremely important. That Jesus teaching, you, you, you don't need to, you got to change the way you look at stuff. Change the way, and that disciple, they said, they were like, well, if that's the case, you know, if the fact of being able to sacrifice stuff, he said right there in 28, somebody start reading for me, 28, Jesus said, that's what we did, somebody start reading for me. Then Peter began to say to him, see, we have left all that followed you. So Jesus answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house, or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or man, for my sake, and the gospel. 
who shall not receive the hundredfold now in this time, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands, with persecution and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last first. Okay, and so the people's like, well, we did that. I mean, you talking about like leaving all your stuff, we did that. We like dropped our nets and left everything and left family and followed you. And Jesus told him, he said, and, and just as sure as you did, he said, you're going to be blessed. You're going to, and you left stuff to follow me, and guess what? I'm going to bless you with most stuff. But guess what else you get along with the other stuff? Persecution. <laughs> so he, Jesus kind of threw that in there. You're right. You left everything for me. And anybody that, that's willing to sacrifice their life for me, I'm going to bless you hundredfold. And, and you're going to be blessed, and you're going to be blessed with stuff and persecution. <laughs> and, 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 but that, that's a little piece he threw in there that, 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 that they probably wasn't expected to hear. Mm -hmm. um, but he, but he, he goes on, he's playing, he said, you know, if you're the, the one that's the greatest now, they're going to be the least important then. The one that's the least important now is going to be the greatest then. And so, you know, I, th I think the main thing is not just to get so caught up and let stuff just mess up your head and, 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 and mess up your ability to really be humble um, before before God. Stuff is good, but it has to be kept in its proper in its proper perspective. And um, and, it, and it could be it, 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 it's um and he's saying it's, and you you have to keep it in the proper perspective. Anybody else want to add anything on that before we pick a read, Brother Adam? I'm using myself as an example of um, you come from some place where it's extremely hard, and you move up to another level, and still you have the ability to turn around and work in the room where you came from. So we can have the opportunity to survive. And, um, and, and I'm going to be betrayed. Um, 
they're going to take, I'm going to be trained to, to lead and preach and teach the religious law. And they say, and, 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 and to, be, to be betrayed means that, like, somebody I don't trust can't betray me. Because I don't trust them in the first place. But to be betrayed means that somebody that you put trust in, you know, that they, be, they betrayed your trust. And so he's saying, somebody that I'm trusting is going to betray me to the chief priest and the, and the teachers of the law. But he says, and they're going to sentence me to die. And, 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 um, and, and they're going to hand me over, you know, to, to the Romans. And he says, and then they're going to mock me and spit on me and flog me and whip me and kill me. And, and he says, but after three days, you know, he says, and he's not saying me, you know, he's saying him, but we know what we're talking about. You know, he said, three days. I'm going to rise again. And this is something that we just really got to sit at the feet of Jesus and listen to. Because we constantly find ourselves, no matter how hard we try to fight, well, I'm not going to say y'all, but I'm going to say me. I constantly find myself saying, you know, um, man, you, you constantly find yourself saying, and, and I'm just going to be just with, with ministry with me. Um, I constantly find myself just asking the question, you know, you know, like even like when I look at, at Bible study, you know, I look at Bible study and church attendance and things like that, and and sometimes I just try to find reasons to to just give be given other opportunities. You know, as a pastor, you want to walk in a full church. That's something that makes you feel good as a pastor. You want to see when you do ministry, you want to see results. You know, when Miss Davis is a principal, and so she wants, there's things that she's looking for as a principal on your different job. There are things that you look for. And as a pastor, the uh, one thing that you look for is to look out and see response, you know, growth. And, and, and I constantly find myself in places where, you know, I'm like, you know, you know I, I probably need to slow down on the new things that I'm doing to enable myself the ability to, to, to be able to get to a place to where I can look at full sanctuaries, you know, sanctuaries full of people that are excited about coming, Bible study that's consistently full of hungry people that want to talk and eat the word of God. And and um and and you and, and, and I think you 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 allow life and the trials that come in life, you allow them Sometimes you allow them more credit than they should get. And, and I think what Jesus is saying to the disciples is, you know, this kind of stuff is to be expected. You know, what makes you think, this is the kind of stuff I'm going to go through. I'm going to be betrayed. I'm going to be whipped. I'm going to be mocked. I'm going to be spit on. But in the end, I'm going to get back up. And, and I think we allow, and I think we, we allow ourselves to be to be deceived out of blessings. You know, if I if I think if I let Satan deceive me and say, you know what, this is really, you know, not the place to where you, you're not going to get what you're looking for. You know, there's some pastors, they just happy just to get a salary. Give me a salary and I don't really, I don't really need to see all this stuff. But there's some people based on who, how you're built, you want to see, you know, you see all these other people that got churches full of people that come early you know, trying to get a seat, and 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 you know that's the kind of I'm built that way. But if I let the devil deceive the way I'm built, deceive me based on the way I'm built, you say, you know what? It's not. This is really not the place for something like that. You know, you're gonna have to go somewhere else. You know, he could trick me out of my blessing. I think so many times in life we allow Satan to to rational talk. Or comment, or, or play with our emotions and talk us out of a blessing because we want everything so easy and so perfect. But I think Jesus is really trying to make a point. It's not going to be easy, and it's not going to be perfect. Stop looking for easy. He slipped it in when he was talking about you. Right? If you sacrifice all that for me, then ain't nobody that sacrificed all that for me. You no, know, all y'all gonna get to heaven that sacrificed all that. You're gonna get. You're gonna be blessed with a hundredfold and persecution. He just threw the persecution in there. I think we have to really be realistic and say, you know what? Life is gonna be a trial. Life is. It's, it's gonna be a trial. I have to accept it. 
And when the trials come, stop getting so frustrated with the trials. Just find ways to attack the trials. Just attack the trials. Don't run from the trials. Just attack the trials. Don't, don't become, con, um, what's that word I'm looking for? Satisfied, content. Don't become content with the trials. To where you just say, okay, I'm just not going to fight like that. Don't, don't, don't get beat into contentment. But at the same time, don't run from the trials. Go and fight the trials. And if that's something that bothers you, and so, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm 100% with y'all transparent. And, um, and, and that's where I have to keep telling myself, stop running from, stop, stop looking for reasons to not have to deal with these trials. Because when you when you get to your next location, you're still gonna have the trial. Might not be that trial, but it's gonna be another trial. You know? And, and and you know the last church I pastored. You know, maybe I was supposed to stay there, I don't know. But I just got tired of always money. You know, always money is an issue, you know. Um, you know, my income was like the big income, you know, and uh, and and, uh, and 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 just the resources to just to be able to do what we wanted to do, you know, and I wasn't ever going to break on my, my concept, you know, I wasn't going to get into all that fundraising and stuff, you know, we were going to do it the way the vision said do it since the first day I passed it, and uh, but I just got tired of that, and I was like, you know, I want a situation where I can do ministry, and then, and then he gave me a situation where I can do ministry, St. Paul, you know, we might be tight, but we, get, we can do ministry. You know, we, money's not our issue. We can do ministry. But then the devil will play with your mind more. But you want to see a whole bunch of people every Sunday. You know, you want to see Bible study for, well, you can't keep running from because you're going to get a new one and a new one. And so stay there and confront the issue. Turn that into a non-issue anymore. You connect with people that will pray with you and will help you address the issue and turn that into a non-issue instead of looking for Jesus. He made it real clear with them. He said, he said, this is what they're going to do to me. They're gonna, it's going to be people that I trust. It's going to betray me. But I cannot, I can't not go to Jerusalem. I have to go, and I'm telling you this is what's going to happen to give you a heads up so you don't run off and, take, and, 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 and fly. Yes, Judith. I just want to say this. I love that. God gives us trials so we grow. Amen. Mm -hmm. The early church, he's telling them, you're going to be persecuted. And we have no way of knowing. But the persecution caused the Christians to spread out instead of just staying in the areas they were. Mm -hmm. They had a diaspora because they didn't have a choice. Mm -hmm. They had to go. They had to go other places that were safer. Mm -hmm. So they were spreading the word faster then maybe they would have. Without persecution. When you have, when I, okay, talk about me. When I have my trials with work, all this stuff that goes on all the time, and I get all these doubts and all this stuff, and stuff is really tough, it forces me to look at what I'm doing, mm -hmm. but it forces me to work harder or work in a different direction because it's real easy to just go, what the heck am I doing? I sit in church, and since I'm in this steward corner, mm -hmm. I see church totally different than I did when I was sitting in the pews. Mm -hmm. Because now I see the church. I see it the same way you see it. Mm -hmm. And it pains me, and that's the real word, it pains me Sunday to sit there, especially, we started last Sunday with, I don't know, maybe there were 40 people in the church. Maybe. Now, more people came later, but we were still three quarters empty. Mm -hmm. But I made the comment to someone last week. If we don't appreciate what we have, and when you're no longer here, we're going to realize what we have. Now, I'm not saying the people that come don't appreciate it, but the people that don't come have no idea the blessings they're missing. And, and I pray about that all the time because it seems to me, being on the outside, that the messages are, are the right messages. They're being received. The things that are happening in our church, our school, our mission work, with the youth, it's all the right things. I read books on other
ministers and what they've done as far as churches. They don't do half of what we do. I mean, the, these big mega churches. So there's a reason why things are exactly the way they are. Mm -hmm. It's not that God's not saying, sorry, Reverend Walsh, you're not doing a good enough job, so I'm not giving you more people. Mm -hmm. No, he's saying it. I'm going to make you continue to work hard because what I'm teaching you while you're doing this is going to, maybe you won't even appreciate the lessons you're learning here until you've gone somewhere else mm -hmm. later in life and you'll realize, wow, all that, that hard work that I did trying to stir the pot, the pot wasn't stirring. All that work, now I understand why I had to do it. I understand why I had to learn from this to do that. I'm learning to appreciate the trials and to thank God when they happen, although it's not always easy to say, thank you that I'm going through this. They're there. And I think one thing that God's kind of dealt with me, because I, I do have those little pity parties, but they're not good, but it's human. And, and I think one thing that God dealt with me with it, with this whole thing, you're gonna go, you're gonna deal with stuff. Um, but to really be appreciative of the faithful folk that you have, you know, it's like, it's like sometimes you can have folk that are working so hard for you. Then you have this other group out there that just, 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 and you get so distracted on the just, just group where you don't really appreciate the faithful folk that are to you. And if you can build on that faithful, that Pat, in that Glover, when he came when, in, in, in the leadership teaching, the one thing he said, he talked about, I'm trying to remember the number, I think he used the bell curve numbers, if I'm not mistaken. I think he used, you got 20% ain't going to do nothing. You got 20% ain't going to do nothing. You know, you got 20% that's way up here, 20% that's that, that way down here, you got that 60% that, that's in the middle, that's, 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 that's trying to do something. And he said, and, and, and he talked about, you know, he talked about that sometimes you, you spend so much time, I don't even know if he used the bell, bell curve, but he used some kind of number. But he said, he was talking about, he said that, you know, sometimes you really got to focus on those who are willing to work because I think Sister Melvin and Judy just somebody just said about the spread. If you can get that to spread, if you can get that that's working well, the 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 diaspora when you talk about the, when you, when you, if you can get that to spread, it might take a little while, but don't spend so much time worrying about stuff you can't fix anyway. You know, keep offering the services, keep offering the support, but if you can build on what is working and get that right there to spread out, um, I mean, you can get a whole lot more done. And that's what I have to always just keep reminding myself. Um, man, you got a small number that's doing a lot of stuff, though. I mean, we are doing some amazing stuff in this community. And so from the outside, it probably looks like we have 350 people doing it. You know, but in reality, you might have 60 or 70 that's doing it. And, but don't start getting down if you can do that much with 60 or 70, this is where you change your perception. And so you say, you know what, if 60 or 70 can do this, let me keep building that 60 or 70, and, and because I know that that core is interested and sees it, and if you can build on that and spread and grow from that, I mean, you could really empower yourself. But I think as humans, you have to stop yourself from going, Jesus was being realistic. This is what you're going to have to deal with and stop running from it, deal with it, face it, confront it, and and um, and, and, and let's whip it, whip it, don't, don't let it whip you, whip it, it's a smell. My comment was, <laughs> along those lines, we're not living in that range, because I was thinking that, what I have learned in my life, is that there are truly the trials that God sends that we go through to, to make us stronger, to make us better, get us ready for something. But also, I, I can say I have been ready for some of my, not trials, but my discomfort mm -hmm. has been because I had a picture in my head. Right. Right. I had a picture in my head of what it was supposed to be. And although I'm sitting at the table and I've got plenty of food, I imagine candles. Right, right, <laughs> flowers. right. And that is the thing that I have tried to, to learn through my life. Get rid of that picture. Get rid of that picture. If God didn't place it there, you don't need to come up to let me offer you something. No. Right, right. Right. 
perfect. I think it's perfect. Yeah. Yes, sir. And I see the same the same thing, you know, I'm just glad we had that discussion because I used to call Reverend Rawls every Sunday morning when I was driving the Sunday school bus. And my thing was is that I got five faithful people that's gonna ride that bus on Sunday. But I said, man, it'd be my ministry if I could fill this bus up. Mm -hmm. And one day, we mess around and start communicating with Reverend Fox crew out there to the place out there. And we had about, said, we about three quarters. And we'd be teasing. I said, if I fit it up, will you buy me another bus? He never agreed to that part, but he did. He said, well, just God, just keep letting God use you. But my thing was, I just was getting frustrated driving this bus all over. I'm talking about all we got to start from here and run all the way out um, on the east and west side of town. Anyway, it was a big route for mm -hmm. five people. And then I'm looking at it like he said, don't worry about filling it up, you know. You got five faithful people that's there. And I just seen that just now, but that was my thing. But then after a while, it got full one morning. I said, Rip, we ain't got no seats on here. You know, I'm happy that morning, but I look at things a lot different as I, believe it or not, when I come in here, I learn something every week. And I just learned that. That we have to look at ministry different than that to stop looking at that because what that does, like I said, it takes our mind off of what now we concentrate on doing this and we just work with the five faithful ones you got and make sure we're on time to get that five. You know, so I learned something. Because that distraction will slow yeah, you down. Yeah, will. So you were doing good work and now you were distracted because of this picture. You know, and 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 and, um, and 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 the picture might be, but it might not be. Now. Right. You know, there might be a whole lot of stuff. You know that needs to be worked on, and so um and so you. But the main thing is don't get distracted from the work. And God called us as churches to do work. We we got a purpose. We, our purpose is not just to to turn the electricity on and. And, and have a place for people to come and sing on Sunday morning and do Bible study on Wednesday night. We have a purpose that, that outside of these walls that's a whole lot bigger than what we do inside of here. It's just a gas station. Yes, ma'am. Pastor Aaliyah, you there's a lot of work that Aaliyah has to do. First, he has to think of himself of what kind of leader he wants to be. Is he going to listen to himself or is he going to listen to, to the Lord and let, Lord, or let the Lord lead? There, there have been times I've been sort of a leader just about all my life. And like you say, you look at and you want people to do the things right, that right. you want. Right. You see it. You see them doing but you don't see them doing right. it's in, in It's in here. Mm -hmm. But then you have to learn that how long it took me to get where I am. Right. To see what God see the way God sees it. And we have to learn how to get there. I mean, let God take us there. Other than that, we will go grow weary and not want to do right. anything because the people don't want to hear you. Because they don't want to be obedient. And you know what you're doing. You're doing what God has said for you to do here at St. Paul. Well, I here. see. Well, you're the leader. Yeah. And so, well, okay. well, God has done it through you. Through, through. But being a leader, like he said, it's going to be persecution. Yeah. We're going to have trials. And we're going to have tribulation. And you ain't going to never have everybody with you. Jesus didn't have everybody with him. Because remember he went up to the to the mountain and, and the two or three that he took with him. Yes, what did they did? They went to see. He said, I guess at least they went with him. That's what you gotta change your percentage. At least they came. Yeah. You know, they fell asleep, but at least they came. I mean and he went on off and yeah. prayed. Prayed again. Come back, they still would sleep. Yeah. Yeah. They would sleep again. But like you were saying, you have to. They focus on the Lord yeah. and just let the Lord lead you. And that's every leader. Right. Because you know, I tell you, I thought I had the best workers it is. You know, I'm talking about the whole picture. Uh -huh. And when it come down, I mean, I got four that I can depend on. I mean, all I got to do is call. Yeah. Or either they'll call me. 
they will have, regardless of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can be sick or not be able to come, and, and everything will get done. Mm -hmm. But I had to ask God to move the vineyard out of the way. I mean, I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about me. No, I, know that's, I think it's Christians deal with it. And, uh, mm -hmm. and so, if this is what we have to do, is just let God work on. And, yeah. and I still say, you ain't going to never have everybody. But God will send you something. God always has people that you can depend on. And, and I think as Christians, I think that you can't get that out of your mind. You got it. Jesus is really trying to prep them. Mm -hmm. It's going to be trials. Yes, it is. But after the trials are done, you're going to rise. Yeah. You're going to be the winner after the trials are done. Man, yeah, I think that's the piece right there. Mm -hmm. And that's the piece we got to accept. That's I'm going to mention 100 old, but you also have first piece. You got it. I ain't gonna say it wouldn't be worth it, but no, I'm just saying. No, I'm just messing with you. I'm just messing with you. If it's not worth the child of tribulation, it's not, I mean, it's not worth it. You're gonna have to go through something to get, you know, go through the point just to get the point where you're going. Right, right, all right. I think just going to that, um, just understanding that we have to go through some things in order to get time blessing. And when you're reading this here, Jesus wanted to give them to understand that because, because they had they had seen some of the, a lot of the works that he done, but Jesus was trying, you know, that's why he pulled them to the side mm -hmm. and was like, hey, if I'm going to talk to you, I need to explain this to y'all so y'all can fully understand. And so I think the more for them so they can also help the people understand, but also get them to understand that I got to go through this. I mean, you're getting blessed right now, but you have, I got to go do this in order for you to be blessed even more. Mm -hmm. And then if you go back and um, just read back here in what it was Luke uh, 9, uh, it was 18 through 21. He said, and it happened as he was along and praying that his disciples joined him and asked him, saying, who do the crowd say I am? So they answered and said, John the Baptist, but some said Elijah, and others say that one of the old prophets has risen again. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered and said, the Christ of God. And he strictly warned, warned and commanded them to tell, to tell this to no one, saying, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised on the third day. So he was just trying to get, you know, because, like you say, some things have to be left unsaid. I don't, you know, right then, Jesus was like, no, nah, you don't need to reveal my identity. Because at that point, you know, if, if his identity was revealed, then people would start treating him differently. We had to get them to understand, look, I must go through this. I understand you got some blessings right now in the city. That's what we was called. They were called up in. Okay, man, hold on. We've been blessed. We've seen you do all this. And then you saying you finna leave us. Mm -hmm. So they were thinking, okay, well, now you finna leave us. You gonna leave us without nothing. But he was trying to get them to understand that I must go through this. I must die. And then I must rise again. But the thing about it, I must go through this in order for you to get the full blessings that I have in store for you. And so I think that's what we have to understand as, as Christians in, in the body of Christ that we're going to have to go through some, some, some trials and some tribulations and some ups and downs. And, and the thing about it is that the leader, which is that you have our pastor, our leader, he's going to have to go some places. And we're going to have to understand, okay, the reason why he's going there. Not saying, okay, well, you say I'm going to go, you're going to tell us, okay, I'm going to go in and I'm going to die. But you, got, you know, we got to understand that, you know, God has given you a vision that, okay, the, 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 the see around that corner. Like, like uh, Elder was saying, sometimes we only can see to the corner, but you need God for us to see around the corner. So we have to understand, okay, well, if God don't give you the vision to see around that corner, we got to understand, okay, you tell us, you spank the cop, look, I know you don't understand it right now, but I must go here. I must take us here in order for us to receive the blessing that God says he has in store for us. And I think that once we start truly and fully understanding that, some of the things that we hear when you know, uh, you know, you hear a pastor treatment, a pastor. When we truly understand that and understand, that, okay, well, this is the vision that God gave you, and understanding that and that we have to go through this because we're so comfortable doing one thing, but you know, we don't like change. But we have to, once we understand that, okay, well, this is what we have to go through, and and we and, and you gotta go around this corner because this is what God has showed you, and that's when I, that's when we're gonna see that our ministry and our church. Is going to really be blessed. I mean, I know we see it now, and this is just just like the disciples. They see the blessing now, and they were okay. We, we love this, and we good right where we are.
But once we understand that, the, 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 the growth of St. Paul and the, and, and, and the limits to our growth, it's just, it's just enormous. It's things that we can, farther than we can ever imagine, but we have to get to that point in that mindset to say, okay, well, God gave path to this vision to see around this corner. Then we have to trust and understand, okay, well, path is going to take us around this corner. We've got to understand that when we get there, we're going to have to go through some things as we're going around to get to this corner. And I think God wants us to understand that as individuals too. Yeah. That that I gotta accept that there are going to be, along with the hundredfold blessings, there are going to be difficult days. Yes. Um, but it's all a part of the process. In the end, God will be glorified. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm glad you went back back there because I can keep my notes in mind because we got happy. <laughs> I love that. But when he was talking about press student, I was thinking about what he was saying, it's like the ones that are close by, it's, it, it's the same thing if, if, if like when you made a statement about Jamal and his friends coming around the house. Don't you realize it's, it's, it's about from a real slim chance that somebody break in your house that ain't never been in your house. It's real hard for somebody to just walk by and just decide to go. They don't know if you're home or not, but this is about close ones where I'm going. So I just went and thought about persecution when I looked at um, Psalms, and it, it's got a whole lot, but I just want to read from 5 to 9, and it talks about, it says, about persecution, when you were talking about the friends and what's going to betray and all this thing. It says, my enemies say of me in malice, when will he die in his name perish? Whenever one comes to see me, he speaks falsely, while his heart gathers slander. Then he goes out and spread abroad. All my enemies whisper together against me. They imagine the worst for me, saying, A vow, a, a vow disease has deceived him. He will never get up from the place where he lies. Even my close friends, what you were talking about, Reverend, you said, even my close friends, whom I trusted, he who shared my bread has lifted up his heel against me. Same joke of broke bread with you, ain't dinner with you and everything. Your close friend, that's the one I'm That's the trade. That was right there and everything. That's scripture there. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Like scripture. Mm -hmm. Don't don't commit suicide. Don't give in. Mm -hmm. Don't say, oh, I can't do it no more. Don't walk around talking about I've been at church hurt or this hurt or that hurt. This life. We have difficult times in life. Get up, brush yourself off, and go do the work. Right. It's an honor really to be able to work for God. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I know everybody, all y'all think y'all jobs were the greatest job in the world. I feel like I got to, I mean, you got to feel like this person has to be a personal thing. Um, but but I feel like my job is the best job in the world. You know, you get a chance to actually, you know, represent God, you know, in a whole community. You know, you get to be that representative. Um, I mean, I can't think of, um, that because this is what I do, that's why I look at that so highly. But, you know, if you were, you know, whatever it is that you do, you know, you had the opportunity to, to, to run a bank or operate a restaurant or whatever, you probably feel the same way about whatever it is that you do. Um, but I think it's just amazing, you know, that God would allow us to represent Him in whatever area of life we represent and then trust us enough to tell people, I mean, His word is precious. I mean, it's like we walking around. Just imagine, you know, a uh, a big container full of rubies, you know, and I mean worth more more zeros than you can even imagine. And he allows you to walk around with this big container full of rubies. And and what have you done to say that you should be trusted with something so precious and so valuable? But the fact that despite whatever our background and our histories are. He allows us to be able to walk around with his word and then trust us to share his word with yeah. other people and not oh. mess it up. I mean, that's big right there. He trusts us to share his word without without messing it up, you know. And um, and so I think, you know, that that's just amazing that in whatever area of life that we find ourselves in, he trusts us to be his representative in that area 
of life and you just gotta just stop letting the negative stuff frustrate you and just say, man, it's an honor um, to do this. And uh, and I'm gonna represent you well and I'm gonna take this beat down that I'm getting right now and because uh, I know in three days I'm gonna get back up. And so it's not gonna kill me, whatever whatever you're going through, it's not gonna kill you. God's gonna, he's gonna make sure that when that whip and fin, you're gonna get back up. Now you probably get another one until later on down the road, but that's life. He's gonna make sure that it doesn't destroy you, that it doesn't kill you. And so that that's amazing, you know, in, in itself. Even just being a parent, you know, that God trusts you to be a parent. God trusts you to be a pastor. God trusts you to be an office in the church. God trusts you to, to operate a business in the world. God trusts you to, to be a janitor. God trusts you you know, to to, to 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 whatever it is that you do, he trusts that you will represent him well in whatever it is that you're doing. I mean, that's that's amazing right there. Um, and so I think that's the way that we have to look at it and, and, and really make sure that we, we're, we're shooting for results, you know, and then not being content with uh, where we are, but shooting for production like he did when he gave talents to people. Uh, he, he won't see. He won't see the increase. And um, and when we don't always see the increase like we want, don't give up. Just keep. He knows what you're trying for. He knows you're not just bearing it. You know. He knows what you're trying for. And I mean, when they mock you and spit on you and whip you and flog you, they feel. You know. He had to deal with. So you know, we talked about on Sunday. What does it mean to, to bear a cross? I mean, there's nothing beautiful about bearing a cross. There's nothing beautiful about it all. It cross represents torture, torment, pain, death. There's nothing beautiful about bearing the cross. And so is, is that what I'm willing to do? Yeah, because I like that you said about the cross. It's because you a saying, what I go and say, I promise I bear this cross along in the whole world. You know that? But it go free? No. No. What is it? That's what it said. No, that's the cross. Yeah, that's the cross for me. Yeah, why should I bear this cross alone? There's a cross for me and there's a cross for you. We have to bear that cross. And that comes right back into the persecution of in that cross. It's the cross of love of Jesus. But the one thing that I don't know, I guess, and we have to thank God. The Bible says, in everything, give him thanks. We don't always, you don't always give him thanks. In everything. But I'm learning as I go in the Lord and grow older. Learning to give, uh, give him thanks in everything. Byron, I've been to the point that I was so sick. And I, and I told the Lord, I promised him, God, I don't care what you do. You just do something for me, in me, and with me. And I'll do what you say to me. I made that promise. Because I remember one Sunday morning, I wasn't feeling good. I didn't feel like that I could do what I was asking. I just asked him to do this. And I told him, I didn't think that I could do it. He said, oh, well, you can do it. I'll help you. And I did it. And I made God promise that if he ever asked me again, I would make no excuses because God did what I asked him to do in me and with me for me. Because there are times that, and I think about it, there are times through the day, I, I walk on the boat early in the morning and I look out and I see the green grass, and I see the flowers blooming, and I see the trees bending. I say, oh God, you're so awesome. You're so awesome. I say, oh God. And I look at TV and look at the news, and I see the floods everywhere. We don't appreciate God for who He is. How we have been blessed here in this city, even in America, in some places in America. We don't we don't see God for who He is. We don't thank Him enough. We don't praise Him enough. We don't worship Him for who He is. We praise Him for what He do for us, but we don't praise Him for who He is enough. We don't worship Him enough for who He is. And that's what worship is. Worshiping Him for who He is. We are so blessed. You don't know how blessed we are.
understand. You did it. Don't What you said is it, it, really good, Sister Cole, because I'm going to tell you, until me hearing it, hearing the word and seeing the word, I, 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 I wasn't thanking God for everything. I was only thanking God for things that he did that I asked and I assumed he didn't answer it, but I wasn't thanking him in my trials and my, in my times of trouble. Like until everyone had to show me that Paul said, thank God in all of our trials and tribulations in life, I wasn't thanking God for me being on Dallas. All I was doing was trying to find a way why I'm my own. I kept beating myself up. Maybe it was the drugs. Maybe when I used to drink. Maybe this and that. Instead of saying, thank you, God, like you made it good. Thank you for this avenue. I could have had cancer. Some didn't have an avenue <coughs> to go to. So I had to learn how to thank God for that. I had to learn God for thanking God for when he don't answer my prayer. I had to thank God for things that knowing that God don't deal with my wants. I had to thank God for he deal with my needs. See, a lot of things I want, I don't even need. We just fought. I didn't want it. A lot of times I had to get into a situation where I had to thank God for being able to bless me from where I'm at now. Because there was one time that I, 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 see a lot of times when it comes to the food and money, and that there, I was fool because see, when I get money, I was thinking that, you know, I look at the clock and just try to see how fast I can spend it. But I ain't know somebody gonna tell you. I ain't never used to it. I had to learn to thank God to help me control to do things and not be in the big head and knowing my wife can handle money better than I can. And all the other things, I ain't got all my uh uh. I'm gonna have me a 20 in there. But I had come to the conclusion that if I get to I feel like control when I say I need $20, you know, because I don't like to act, you know what I'm saying, but I had to learn the thing that thank God and everything, because he's in control. But I didn't just come up one day and talk that, but I thought I did not curse, but I just said, man, the things I did in my life, I don't mess up. But then I look at people in Dallas and they never did no drugs. There's people in Dallas they never drank before. So you can't go around and beat yourself up with that and just thank God and be glad in it at that, because it's all in his hands. It all, it all, it all, he in control of all things. So we need not to beat ourselves up. And just thank him anyway. Just thank him. But I used to thank him for a good thing. Like, when I have a little, but well, anyway, I did it. Oh, thank you, God, for that. But, you know what I'm saying, but look at I ain't never thank him for just being able to go to Dallas and be able to just deal with my trials and knowing that he never forsaken me. So I had to learn that. I just had a couple of nights. I've been going to church a long time, in and out, but I never was really grounded. I never was really grounded. I wasn't on church hopper, but I just went because I knew that was the right thing to do. And I did. I came back, and then here I am. You know, but I just learned to thank him for all the things I sit back and start beating myself. I had four hours of sitting that machine trying to figure out what's going on. I had to stop that. I had to stop that. Y'all notice here for the last three months, or uh, the best couple of months, I'm in the Bible study every Wednesday. It was a time where I was sitting there and let the devil tell me that you tired, go home and this, I, uh, I thank God that let me be able to go in the house one more time. I, when I say that, I say that from my heart. And I had to start claiming that stuff. I was just beating myself up trying to figure out what's going on. But now I sit on them four hours and well, I go home and get that two hour rest, five o'clock, take my shower, ready to go. That's my Thing, but I thank him now. I don't be trying to question God. Because he ain't going to give you no answer like that, no way. So that's what I do. Thank him in all my stuff. All my stuff, I thank him. All right. Wonderful. Wonderful. Good study. So we got to expect it too. But just keep fighting the fight. And in the end, we'll win. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Michelle, you have anything? Last will be first. No, sir. Okay.